everyone, my name is Ms. Connolly. Um, I started making videos for my fifth grade students so that they could learn during this crazy time and decided to share it with anyone who wanted to learn math during this time. So please reach out if you have any questions, conollymathathome at gmail.com. I can cover um, topics from um, K through five if you need help helping your student at home, if you're a teacher and wanna have some videos ready for your students or if you're students and you're like, oh my gosh, I get it, and you want to share it with one of your friends, make sure you do. Okay, so like, share, and subscribe. Let's get as many people learning as possible. And let's talk about U.S. Standard Units Measurement Equivalents. So when we talk about measurement equivalents, we're talking about things that are equal. So measurements that are equal to each other. And in the United States, we use um, different measurements than other people. So that's why it's called U.S. Standard Units. Um, and let's talk about some of those units. So, one foot. When you go to the doctor, they're gonna measure you in feet and inches. And I have a little tape measure here to show you. Sorry, not in my actual classroom with an actual ruler, but a ruler is usually 12 inches, which is one foot. So you see that measurement here. Um, so, since, so one foot is from here to here, and you have 12 inches in this foot, so they are equivalent measurements. Okay, inches are smaller pieces, so you need more of them, just so you know for when we start solving. And then the next measurement that we have that we talk about, and if you're a football fan, then you hear this on the TV all the time, but when we're talking about one yard, this is one yard. Can you see it from here to here? One yard. Um, this is the same as three feet. So inside one yard, there's three feet, and since there's 12 inches in each foot, there's 36 inches in one yard, okay? Sometimes you're gonna have to do these conversions um, in two steps, okay? I am not going to be showing you a mile because one mile is the same as 5,280 feet, okay? So um, when we're thinking about, that's a really long measurement when you think about running a mile, if you have to do that in gym class or when you're driving a mile, it seems to go a little bit faster, but one mile is the same as 5,280 feet, so it's a pretty decent size measurement. The other measurements I'm gonna talk about today are weight. I'll cover capacity in another video, so the video doesn't get too long, but when we talk about weight, the doctor's gonna give you a weight in pounds, and one pound is the same as 16 ounces, okay? So if you look at maybe a can of soup, you're gonna see OZ, and that's what they're talking about, ounces. Um, and sometimes when, well not sometimes, always, when babies are born, people share their seven pounds, six ounces, or their um, eight pounds, 15 ounces. That's a bigger baby, but anyways, um, that's when you might hear that, so I just want you to keep an eye out for it and be familiar with it. And then another measurement we talk about is another big one, um, one ton, it's the same as 2,000 pounds. So I want you to take a picture of this or jot it down, pause the video so that you can write these down. They should be memorized. Um, you're gonna be using these conversions for the rest of your life. You're gonna use them in real world problems. So please um, get those written down and commit them to your memory. And let's talk about how to convert these measurements. So in fifth grade, you have to convert measurements within the same system. So we're gonna be talking about US standard measurement and you need to know if you have six feet, how many inches is that? If you have um, 4,000 pounds, how many tons is that? So those are the types of problems that you're gonna see. So let's talk about uh, feet and inches, okay? And one way to help you figure out what's going on is to make a table. Okay, and by the way, shout out to my fifth grade friends in Texas. I know your teacher's using this video and I hope it's helpful to all of you. So um, anyways, back to our input output table. So we can use this table in many ways and it's helpful for us to think about. So if you are given a problem, let's say that you need to figure out, you get six feet equals blank inches, sorry for the lack of space. This is a very small board, if you couldn't tell, <laughs> next to my chart paper. Um, so let me move this over here, so feet, inches. Okay, so you might be asked to say, how many inches are in six feet? So we can use a table to help us determine this. 
If I have one foot, I have 12 inches. If I have two feet, how many inches is that? 24. If I have three feet, that's 36. Four feet, um, that means I have four groups of 12 inches, so it's 48. Okay, we could keep counting five feet, six feet, but what I want is for us to come up with a rule that we would use every single time that we are going from feet to inches. So what would a rule be? What happens here? What do I do to one to get the number of inches? It's gonna be the same thing I do to two feet to get 24 inches. I wanna know what is the same thing I do to three feet to get 36 inches, four feet to get 48 inches. And it's related to this um, equivalency over here. So now that you've had a second to think about it, or you can pause if you need more time, what's happening each time we go from feet to inches is we're multiplying by 12. So I'm gonna let N stands for any number of feet, any number of feet at all. You're gonna start seeing all this stuff in sixth grade where we talk about, um, we use a letter to represent any number. So N is gonna be any number of feet. What do we do to any number of feet that we're given to find the number of inches? It will always be N times 12. So any number of feet. We will get do n times 12 to figure out how many inches that is. Okay, so we could skip down to 100. We're not skip counting by 12 anymore. n times 12, if n is 100, 100 times 12, you would have 1,200 inches. So, at the beginning of conversions, it's really helpful to create a table and come up with rules for what's happening. So now we know. Any number of feet times 12 will give us the number of inches. Oops, that is, it's a funky looking six. Let's try that one over again. So six feet times 12 will get us 72 inches because we're following the rule that we developed. You guys can probably look at this and see one times one foot is a one group of 12 inches. So two feet is two groups of 12 inches, three feet is three groups of 12 inches, and that's what the multiplication symbol stands for, groups of. So that is how we would go each time from one foot to 12 inches. But let's talk about when we're trying to go from something like three feet to one yard, because it might look a little bit different and we need to pay attention to what's happening. Okay, so I'm just gonna change this guy up here. No, just kidding, I'm just gonna start all over. All right, so let's say this time you are given the number of feet. I'm gonna stick with 72 feet, even though we just did 72 inches, I like this number. And I wanna know how many yards that is. So this is some of the, what um, your problems might look like, and then you're gonna get story problems, as you know, but these are real world situations that we deal with. So. This time, I'm gonna put feet over here, and I'm gonna put yards over here, and I'm gonna be thinking about what is my rule every time. If I'm given the number of feet, what do I have to do to find the number of yards each time, okay? So I'm gonna take three feet over here. I know three feet is the same as one yard. So I know six feet is the same as two yards. And I know nine feet is the same as three yards. So what I want you to do, and if you have to pause and think about it for a second, you can. I want to know what is happening to this number each time, what's happening to the feet each time to get the number across from it. And it's the same rule each time. And I want you thinking about what's happening. I'm going to give you a hint. We are not doing three times three because that would be nine. Okay, so think about it for a second. I wanna know, if you had to hit pause, that's fine. If I, I wanna know what do you do to any number of feet to get the number of yards every single time? We would be thinking about N divided by three. So any number over 
here, to get any number over here, we're going to divide by 3. And that makes sense that we have less yards than we have feet. It's an equivalent measurement, but feet are smaller than yards, okay? So let's think about it real quick and why this makes sense. This is one foot, okay? It is smaller than a yard, so we need more of them to make a yard. We need three of them to make a yard. So it makes sense right now to think about three feet equals one yard. I need nine feet to make three yards. We need more feet because the units are smaller to make the equivalent measurement. Okay, so, almost knocked you over. Let's think about 72 feet. So if I have 72 feet, how many yards do I have? So what we're going to think about is 72 divided by 3. And you can use any division strategy you want. I'm going to think about multiplying up so I know that 3 times 20 is 60. I know 3 times 4 is 12. So I know that I have 24 yards. 24, see it here? There's the 72. I know that I have 24 yards to make 72 feet, they're equivalent, okay? So what is the same as 72 feet? 24 yards. How did I find that? I found that by following my rule, okay? So once you get comfortable with these, you're not gonna have to make the table the whole time, but you should be thinking about what's happening to get from feet to yards. You can even see it here. Three divided by three is one. 12 divided by 12 is one, okay? Or you can go this way. One times three is three. One times 12 is 12. Okay, so let's talk about when it's not perfect, when you might have some leftover inches. Let's talk about that situation. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to do an example with weight, because we just did some length ones. All right, so let's talk about pounds to ounces. Actually, no, I want to go ounces to pounds. I'm going ounces to pounds, people. All right, so I'm going to go ounces to pounds. I'm going to use my first one here, 16 ounces. It's the same as one pound. So I know if I have two pounds, I have 32 ounces. I know that if I have three pounds, I have, um, oh, let me add, 48 here. Okay? So what's happening here, to go from pounds to ounces, 1 times 16 is 16, 2 times 16 is 32, 3 times 16 is 48. Or if we're going the other way, because we know pounds is the bigger measurement, I need less pounds to make the same amount of ounces. So 16 divided by 16 is 1, 32 divided by 16 is 2, 48 divided by 16 is 3. So to go from ounces to pounds, I am dividing whatever the number is by 16. So let's say that you're given a number that's not a perfect multiple of 16. Are you ready? All right, now I got to think of one. So it's, I don't want to make it perfect. Is 72 going to work? Let's do 75. I know that that was definitely not a multiple of 16. So let's say something weighs 75 ounces and you are asked to say how many pounds is that so let's get started so we know that we're going to take 75 and divide by 16 to get the number of pounds so let's set it up like division here and I know everyone has many different division strategies I love dividing um, you just saw me use multiplying up. I'm going to use multiplying up a different way. It's not the standard algorithm for division, so if it's not something you're familiar with, just stay tuned. It's kind of fun. All right, so I'm going to start with 16 um, times 4, so I can um, think about how to get closest to here. So 10 times 4 is 40. 6 times 4 is 24. So I know so far... I've made four whole pounds. 
and I have 11 ounces left over. So I made four whole groups of 16, which is four pounds. And I have 11 left over. So I can write this as four pounds, 11 ounces. And this is how you, if when the babies are born, you see that they were four pounds, that's a very, very small baby, but four pounds, 11 ounces. This is a piece of the next pound. If it gets to 16 ounces, it is the next pound. This would go up to five, but this is not a full pound. So you could write it as four pounds, 11 ounces, or you could write this as a fraction out of 16 ounces. This is four and 11 sixteenths of the next pound. Okay, so two ways to write it when you don't land exactly perfect on a um, multiple of 16 when you're talking about ounces and pounds, you would have seven, or sorry, four pounds, 11 ounces, or four and 11 sixteenths of a pound. Four, pound, four whole pounds, 11 sixteenths of the next pound. Okay, so let's look at that. Sometimes it's um, a lot easier to think about with feet and inches. So we'll do one more example with feet and inches. I'm not going through each of these because the, it's gonna be the same thing. You're gonna make an input, ta input output table. You're gonna determine what the rule is. You're gonna use the equivalencies to help you also determine the rule and then you solve from there. So let's say that you are um, given 66 inches and you have to determine the number of feet, okay? So if I have 66 inches to determine the number of feet, we've gone over this, but I know that um, if I divide 66 by 12, because 12 divided by 12 is one, I'm going this way with my conversion. I know if I divide by 12, that will get me where I need to be. So. Let's think about 66 divided by 12. This time, yeah, no, I'll just do the same strategy. So 66 divided by 12. I know that I can do 12 times five and get five full feet. Five full groups of 12 fit inside here. I have six inches left over. So you might see this written as five feet, six inches, or if you want to get fancy, five feet, six inches, if I remember correctly from the last time I saw it written like that, um, five feet, six inches, or you might want to say that you have five full feet and six twelfths of the next foot. So six out of 12 inches of the next foot and six twelfths makes me think I have five and one half Six twelfths is equivalent to one half. So another way that you can write 66 inches is five and a half feet. You can write five feet, six inches, or you could write five and six twelfths feet. It's all about how you label it when you get to these decisions of how you wanna write it. If you wrote five, six feet, that wouldn't make any sense, okay? If you write five feet, six inches, then we know exactly what measurement it is, okay? So while you're working on your conversion work, I want you to make tables for each problem until you get used to how to do the conversions, okay? Decide what the rule is. Are you going this way and multiplying by 12? Or are you going from inches to feet and dividing by 12? I also want you thinking about the size of the unit. If inches are smaller than feet, you need more inches to make one foot, okay? It's always gonna be that way. 24 inches makes two feet, okay? If you're going this way, one mile gets to 5,280 feet. You know that two miles is going to be a lot better than that. 10,000, why can't I add 560 feet, okay? So if you are going this way, you might say, well, I know for one mile I need a ton of feet, so that I know for two miles I'm multiplying, it's getting bigger, because that feet are smaller measurements. Okay, so conversions can be a little tricky. It takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of understanding. So use our advice, do the input output table, determine the rule, and then also check if your answer makes sense, okay?
when you get to um, 66 inches and you don't have a perfect full whole number amount of feet, be careful how you write it, okay? And just make a decision about what it should look like so it makes sense and is the actual equivalent measurement, okay? In the next video, I'll go over capacity um, in US standard measurements and then we'll get you a metric measurement as well, which might feel a little easier, we'll see.